and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and the next, for, for the next hour, we're going to talk about art, fine arts, art and sculpture. We're going to get cultured, okay, but before we begin, if you have a question for my wonderful guest, whom you will meet momentarily, you can always give us a call. We are live this evening at 781-270-9199. You can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. You can email me 24-7. I might not read it right away, but I will read it. And that email is always there. I would like to thank the crew for this evening, as always, because I do really appreciate their efforts. Chris Flaherty, Colleen Moore, Liz Gillespie, and Jolie Atwood. Thank you, everyone, so much for giving up your Wednesday evening to come hang out at BCAT. And before we do the last but not, well, yeah, okay, last but not least, I want to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Hopefully the homework is done, and hopefully you had fun at hip-hop class. And I do want to have a quick shout-out to Tad Stefanak, who is celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday, Tad. Okay, now, I would like to introduce my wonderful guest. We have Jonathan Sachs, who is the Sculpture Park Committee Chair, in search of a committee, right. apparently. Right. So, okay, well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm really excited about it, so about hearing about it. I saw the little news clip, the news story that Rich Hosford put together. Yes. And it just sparked my interest. So, right. before we get into the Sculpture Park, aspect mm. of it. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, where, or, and my audience, sure. where you grew up, how you came to the Burlington area, mm. and then what made you interested in sculpture and art? Yes. Well, way back I grew up in a little town that's not that far from New York City. In truth, I grew up as a Yankee fan, because <gasps> it was close to New York City. But then when I came to college in Boston, uh, it was in 67. You mem may remember, some of you, that 67 was a very big baseball year. Oh, okay. And pretty much um, I had kind of forgotten about baseball in my later high school years, so I became a Sox fan. Then, and really, I took a job near Kenmore Square oh, okay. in about 1972. Okay. And I would come out after work and I would hear a big roar. And in those days, you could go into Fenway Park for free after the seventh inning. Whoa, okay. And there were typically around 5,000 people in the stands. People don't remember that. It wasn't until 75 that the team really got hot. Okay. Anyway, so uh, came to school here. Uh, I lived actually in the city. I lived in Brookline for a long time. And when I... My best friend, my dog Walter, was getting old, mm -hmm. and I had to carry him up and down three flights of stairs. Ooh, yeah. That I said, let's move to the country for the last part of this, and we moved to Burlington. Excellent. And uh, good choice. Yes, it's uh, just to give you an idea. Uh, the day I moved in, the fellow across the street, his wife baked brownies and brought them over. Wow. And uh, we've been buddies ever since, and uh, I have the most wonderful neighbors. So Yay! it's really been a good thing. Yeah, pretty good neighbors, too. I'm yeah. happy with my neighbors here yeah. in Burlington. So, um, so as far as the sculpture like, thing, did I... Did you yes. study art in college, or...? Well, a little bit. I have a strange degree. I have a uh, Bachelor of Science in Art and Design from MIT. Wow, I, okay. I foolishly applied to MIT, and they <laughs> foolishly let me in, even though I wasn't really qualified. Uh, and I ended but up did studying... did you graduate? Yes, I okay. periodically pull out the diploma, because I'm not really... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe I really did. But... Um, I ended up studying uh, photography with the famous Minor White and filmmaking mm. with Ricky Leacock and graphic design with various people. And um, I got a good, strong graphics, film, and photography mm. background from that college. Good, which like is visual. Oh, yeah, okay. which is uh, unusual to say the least. Yeah. yeah, I would not normally think of MIT as... Nope, as an art school. A visual arts. Well, school. really, my instructor was quite brilliant and my advisor, and he basically put together a sort of... He, he concocted mm. a course for me that allowed me to do all these things. Cool. 
So yeah, it was it was a very smart guy. Excellent. He knew the system. So tell me about the sculpture park. Why? Yes. Why a sculpture park? And yeah. well, um, why not? <laughs> one of my uh, neighbors uh, in where I live on Oxbow Lane, which is a dead end off of a d another dead end, so it's a pretty okay. quiet place. Uh, is uh, Jack Kelly, who was a longtime uh, Burlington resident and been involved in town meeting, and now he's in charge. Uh, uh, the, he's the chairman of the planning board. Okay. But he first he encouraged me to run for town meeting, which I did, and got kind of interested in issues. Um, I got pretty involved first and still with the Friends of Mary Cummings Park. It's one of the two big okay. parks that we have, although its history is very complicated and. Yes, so it's actually owned by Boston, but we maintain it, or something like that? Owned by Boston, nobody maintains it. Nobody maintains it. Well, that's the problem. Yes, okay. so we're about <laughs> seven years. I've been doing all of the, uh, you know, the trail work and the, all of the trail signs and the website and all that. But oh, okay. the trustees of reservations are taking that over, oh, which is yeah. one reason why I can kind of move my attention from Mary Cummings Park to the, uh, to the sculpture something concept. Something more central. So what happened is... Um, uh, I was uh, selected to be on the Master Plan Steering Committee. Okay. Every town is required by the state to have a master plan every 10, create a master plan every 10 years. And there okay. were many, many, many meetings once or twice a month for years. And it's still on the verge of being completed. Those meetings were very interesting because they put people from all walks of town life in a room together twice a month. <laughs> And, um, to hear, figure it out. <laughs> it was, yeah, and a lot of great things came out of it. Now, one of the things that came up time and time again about Burlington is that in terms of recognizability, mm -hmm. every town around Wakefield and Woburn and Stoneham, you name it, they all have a town center from the 1890s with those two-story buildings, oh, okay. that nice turn-of-the-century architecture. Yeah. And we have them all. That's exactly <laughs> one of the issues. So we were part of Woburn. Okay. So we, yes. when we became a town, mm -hmm. it was too late to have a town center. Hmm, we have okay. a little town center, but, you know, it's really, if you drive up 3A, um, you know, you've got a couple of little strip malls and you've got gas yeah. stations. It's not, it's yeah. not, nobody, <laughs> let me give you an it's example. An unrecognizable center. Yes, on the Burlington Residence Facebook page, somebody said, I just moved here from out of town, and I'd like to know where I can get a postcard of Burlington to send to my friends in Texas where I moved from. And there were many hilarious responses like, <laughs> what, are you kidding? The, we don't have, we do have some things, yes. but it's subtle. And there really aren't a lot of things that would have a po that would be worthy of a postcard. postcard yes. Okay. Now, so here we have a town that has many wonderful things about it, uh, but it doesn't have that center of town that's recognized. But what we do have, which is very unusual, is we have the common, and across the street we have Simon's Park. Yes. And these are Lots very lovely, pleasant open spaces, which will never be messed with. I want to make it absolutely clear that um, our idea for a sculpture park would never involve cutting a, a single tree, not even a little bush. Nothing gets cut down. Um, but here's the thing. When you drive through Burlington on 3A, mm -hmm. you drive through and you say, oh, that's nice. There's a common and there's some grass over there. Whatever. Oh, what and a cute little gazebo. And then you, yes, and then you see um, the, the pine trees. The little mm -hmm. town forest is kind of lovely, but it's like, okay. Um, and yeah, frisbee golf in there, too, or something. Don't there's they? a little area that people play frisbee golf uh, on Simons Park, and in, that's another thing that we would not interfere with. Okay. We wouldn't mess with that. Uh, so uh, I had uh, visited a couple of sculpture parks during that planning process, including the Decordova, which is really oh, quite wonderful. I've it's heard, 20 yeah. bucks to park at the Decordova. Oh, jeez, yeah. It's free if you don't park, but you can't get there without parking <laughs> unless you ride a bike. Yeah, that's not Not very happen. many people are going to do that. 
So looking around at Burlington, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got this beautiful open space. Mm -hmm. And um, it's what I've been saying to people is we already have a sculpture park. We just don't have the sculptures. Oh. We have this lovely undulating green space that goes right along either Center Street okay. or along uh, uh, Cambridge? Cambridge Street. And, and by the way, nothing about this park has been settled yet. We're forming a committee. Okay. And if anybody out there wants to be on the committee, they go to the website, art4burlington.org, okay. and sign up on the form. And you can say, I want to be on the... Uh, committee or I'm interested and I don't want to be whatever um, anyway so we have this pleasant center of town but you could drive right by and say I didn't, I didn't oh, that, yeah. that, well, that I missed it I'm sorry that was the center the other problem <laughs> is of course if you say Burlington to almost anybody in eastern Massachusetts the instant response is the mall near the mall either that or they ask me if I'm from Burlington Vermont yeah that too and so... Oh, do you live near the mall? Um, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. And I Everybody lives like near the mall. To have a mall, to be known for the mall, is not a great thing. I mean, it's not a terrible thing, but it's not a great thing. And we have we this... We are more than the mall. <laughs> right. Now, what I've said to people the following... Well, but we like know, the mall, though. It helps keep our taxes nice Yes, and, and actually, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I think the stuff that they're going to do there now where they're going to have restaurants facing yeah. out instead of a big blank wall, I think it's going to be even better yeah. than it uh -huh. was. But nevertheless... Okay. And, you know, and we have Third Ave, and that's got some cool stuff exactly. going on, too. But again... The district, and yeah, it's... You're going to send somebody a postcard of Wegmans? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, now... She could. She could, right. <laughs> Um, so, um, it occurred to me, well, you know, if we built a hundred million dollar art museum, that would completely change people's uh, opinion. Oh, Burlington, that's not with the art museum. Well, we don't have a hundred million dollars laying around or $10 million a year to run it. No. And we don't have a place to put it. True. So, a sculpture park is like an art museum, but... It's outdoors. No building, no staff. No wires, no plumbing, no utilities, like no cost associated with it at all. Hmm. And I started well, there would be some maintenance involved. Not much. Not much? Because not really. Okay. Um, recreation, um, well, let, let me, let me okay. back up a little bit. So it occurred to me, you know, this could really, this could really be a thing. We could have this. And um, I checked and I found that the town of, city of Skokie, Illinois, is one of the cities that has a municipal sculpture park. Oh, and I okay. contacted them, and they what they do is they put out four $2,500 stipends a year to backyard and basement sculptors to okay. compete to be, get their sculpture accepted. Hmm. And if they get accepted, they put it in the back of a truck, and they drive it from wherever <laughs> they live up to Skokie, and the Skokie people put it on a pad. Cool. You know, which is not real. It's not real construction, and mm -hmm. there's no wiring and yeah. plumbing. Um, there it is. And I guess they stay for two years. Okay. Some of them are permanent. And then they okay. also have another aspect is that they ha have uh, a schools program, which we would also want to do. So if high school okay. kids want to compete for a sculpture oh. area, we can do, obviously, we do that as well. Okay. So now there's a model for it. It's not very expensive. Okay. Um, now, so I had been in steering committee. I had been using my little Photoshop skills to mock up various ideas okay. to make the town center a little bit jazzier. And one of them was Sculpture Park. Oh, and I sent okay. it around. I gave a copy to everybody. I guess about yep. 20 people. On, and I would make all these prints and <laughs> say, here's an idea. And this time, instead of saying, well, there's John with another crazy idea. Three of the people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know what the other crazy ideas are because this is kind of cool. Yeah, uh, they weren't that crazy, but and as I think about it now, they're all their time has come and gone. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, um, some people came forward individually and said, "I like that idea. We should do that mm. idea." And so, when you get people to come forward, and one of the people. Uh, was Kristen Brown, who is the chairperson of the Recreation Commission. Ah, okay. And that was very important because um, 
the land that we're talking about is all controlled by the Recreation Recreation Commission, and she Mm. thought it was a good enough idea that she would stick her neck out and say, I like it. And a couple of other people as well that were pretty prominent in town. I'll leave their names out, you know, just because, you know. But you did have interest. Had interest, and we had a couple of quiet meetings in somebody's office and sort of planned how to get it going. Uh, And that was really two years ago. I okay. didn't really know exactly what the next step yeah. was. Um, okay, great. We have an idea. Now what? Do we take it to town meeting? Well, we need a we need it in the form of a bylaw, and okay. I really didn't know how. And actually, um, I talked to our all-knowing town clerk, Amy okay. Warfield. I love her, and she said, "Here's how you do it: do what the dog park people did." The Dog Park Committee was formed as an ad hoc committee of recreation. And they planned out a dog park. They got a group of people involved, and they raised a great deal of money. I thought a dog park was you put up a fence, and it's a dog park. No, no, no. No, no, no. They raised $100,000 to put... uh, Like artificial turf or something? Yes. I don't have a dog, so I've never been over there. That dog park was a very big effort uh, on the part of... uh, Everybody. That committee, there were actually two committees, a nonprofit okay. and then another committee with REC. Um, but she said that's the way to do it. And so we started looking at that direction. Okay. And in fact, we're on the Recreation Commission's docket to just talk about, to request the formation of a committee oh, uh, on, okay. I think, in late, late November, oh, the, next, okay. the next Recreation well, Commission Well, I didn't meeting. think you had to get permission to form a committee. Well, no. you don't if you just want to do it. But if you want it to be of the rec department, you've oh, got to ask the rec department. Okay. <laughs> got it. Surprise, we got a new committee. <laughs> Another thing happened, which is that what, you didn't um, put the memo? one of our <laughs> early backers uh, on steering committee uh, was working with the folks from Nordblum and okay. said, you know, there's a lot of interest in town in a sculpture park. Nordblum does a lot of phil- philanthropic Yes. Things, too. Yes, they're a very okay. progressive outfit. I mean, if you look at the development they're doing up there on 3rd Ave, a lot of it has got very good architecture, very, very well thought out. So um, they put out, when they built the new Lifetime Fitness Center, there is a sculpture pad out front along. Really? Mm-hmm, along Middlesex Turnpike. Well, you hmm. would notice it now because it's just a concrete spot with nothing okay. on it. And they gave $10,000 towards the sculpture, but it required the formation of a committee to choose the sculpture. Mm. So I put three and three together and came up with four. And (laughs) the idea is that we will form the committee that will be the ad hoc committee of recreation. But it'll also be in place anytime somebody like Nordblom or the mall or anybody else wants a public sculpture and they want a committee to okay it oh we'll have the committee in place yeah because i can imagine you probably don't want any random person exactly putting up any random you've got to have a group of townspeople to say yes this is acceptable this is not acceptable right and it's pretty easy to imagine what we do want and don't want we (laughs) want you know we want sculptures that are colorful that are interesting that are family friendly g-rated yeah, I mean, <laughs> there is a place for controversial art, but not municipal. Yeah. That's not the place for stuff that uh, is shocking or, you know, shockingly beautiful. You don't need uh, to make a not, political you know, statement. We're not going to be making political statements. Now, um, so um, what we're going to do is as soon as the uh, Rec Commission authorizes the creation of this ad hoc committee, we will start to have meetings. Okay. We have formed a partnership with the New England Sculptors Association. Who knew there and was one? Well, I That's discovered cool. it by typing in Sculpture Association into Google. Ah, and it, Google is a wonderful thing. It, it, I don't know how we all survived. Uh, I don't know how we ever did anything without... You know, we were talking Internet before access. about how did, you, how did you get from point A to point B without a cell phone. We had these things called maps. But anyway, um, and I contacted them, and they were quite interested. As you'd expect, a sculpture association would be really excited about a town that wants to put a major sculpture yeah. park in the center of town. So we had a meeting with their 
uh, president, and um, that is the direction we're going now. They will help us put out the word to their membership of thousands of sculptors. Okay. Oh, so they have the sculptors. Okay. Yes. And uh, I think it's logical to go with New England-based. Uh, National would give us... To start. Yes. And it <laughs> also means that there's less transportation of all than okay. if you, you know. So... Now, is New England too widespread, or would you think, think so. like, maybe just Massachusetts, or...? I think New England okay. gives us a little bit more, a little more, okay. more range. So they will help us put out the word and help us choose. And the first thing we started to do was put together some specifications, like, okay. well, a specification for the one over by Lifetime Fitness. For example, now, this is an outdoor sculpture. It's got to be able to stand up to wind and snow and rain. Um, New England weather. New England weather. <laughs> and also, you know, 100 degree temperature and, you know, 20 below. Right. And that's a permanent sculpture. The other ones may have oh. a two-year life, but that one's going to be there for a long time. Okay. And the thing is, you think about it, if you want a colorful sculpture, that can be paint, and paint tends to fade. So we have to think about these things. Yeah. Um, now, that area, that part of Middlesex Turnpike is not really a pedestrian area. It's really pretty no. far up. <laughs> Nobody's going to walk by there. Right. So the Still specifications that we're car riding. Car traffic, though. A lot of car traffic. The specification is it's got to be something you can see and enjoy from the car. Yeah. And it's got to be pretty tall. So not a lot of detail because you don't want people going, you know, stopping and yes. looking at it. Right. So, okay. so we came up with an initial specification for that. And then as soon as the committee is formed officially, we'll get together and, and finalize that. They okay. will put out the word uh, with the approval of Nordblom folks. We will choose a sculpture and it will get put in. Excellent. Then we'll have a committee that has one sculpture under its belt. And then we will start to look at how do we create a sculpture park in the center of town. Okay. Now. And we still haven't figured out exactly where in right. the center of town. Okay. Right. I'm now, the original that. idea was that um, when you drive through the center of town, the common and that end of Simons Park, you can't see the ball fields from 3A. No. A. no. It's cannot. just kind of grassy, yeah. you it's know. It's like that hill. Yeah. yeah. So um, the original thought was this is a perfect place in and around there. However, uh, nothing has been decided other, the really the only thing that's been decided is that a, a number of people think that it's a cool idea to have a sculpture park in the center of town. Now, if we have them spread out around town, okay. that's great too. But I don't think an occasional sculpture in uh, Third Ave or in the mall is going to change anybody's perception of town. I mean, if in the end, if the center yeah. strip of Mall Road were to have like 40 major sculptures, all right, that would be that's fine. That's different. But that's a different story. But even then... I don't think there's room to put anything on Mall I Road. Think, I think there's a center strip. But I think oh, okay. it's more... I think the center of town is the area that needs its own image. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of space there, like you had mentioned. There's a lot of space there. There's really now, a lot of space. Kind of tangent, but when you're trying to identify the sculptures, mm. do you also have to consider size? Because you don't want something ginormous. Right. Because well, if it's too big, it could be a distraction. Yeah, I mean, um, y yes, you're right. You, you don't want something that would be... Uh, you need it like proportional to the space that it's in, kind of. Right, and that's the kind of thing that the committee, the would. committee would wrestle with along with the Sculpture Association. Now, okay. the other thing is that the original vision, if you want to call it my original vision, was that from, let's say, across from the Shell Station all the way along the edge of Simons Park and between the woods and the road, across from the new okay. com huge new development that's replaced Building 19, that yes. there okay. could be that's okay. a whole string of sculptures yeah. so that you could walk from the commercial center up to the government center of town, and mm. it would be a beautiful, fascinating walk with all the sculptures. Yeah. Okay, fine. That's a long-term vision. We might just start with two or four. Mm. And so that would give us a chance to see what works and what doesn't work. Okay. Now, the specifications, the guidelines that we would come up with for the center of town would be different than the ones for Lifetime Fitness because these, you could walk right up to them. Okay. So if they're fairly detailed, 
And in fact, um, that's really a pedestrian friendly area. Mm -hmm. There's a sidewalk, and then yep. you could go from the sidewalk up onto the Well, there's also grass. so many things in the summertime going on on the Common, like the concerts on the Common and the movie nights and, you know, special well, events. Like that's one reason why okay. the selectmen don't want us to put it on the Common. They want to save the Common for okay. those big events. Because I'm also thinking Truck Day, you don't want sculptures in the middle right. of... Trucks. I mean, if it got popular and there was a call to put one on the very tips of the corners of the common where nobody drives, it, well, that, that's fine. But basically, no, not the common. Okay. Um, but on fireworks night, uh, people just line up on the hill and a little that's row of true. sculptures would be lovely. Now, the specifications for sculptures on, the, on that part of the town, first of all, um, if they can be interactive, that you can play with them in okay. some format, that would be wonderful. Okay. There's a huge range. If you think about the ducklings in the Boston Public Garden. Right. Incredibly popular. Kids yes. love to play on them. Yes, they do. That's kind of an interactive sculpture. It's the opposite of don't touch. It's please touch. Those right. are bronzes, and they're pretty tough. Although, I'm also thinking, I went out to Western Mass, where I grew up, and... The Sprigfield Quadrangle has a Dr. Seuss museum, mm. and they have the Dr. Seuss sculptures. And I went there with my family, and they actually had signs saying, do not come on these because it's too hot, and the bronze would, like, burn your butt or you something. You know, that's an interesting question. These, the, uh, the ducklings are probably in the shade. They never I heat up that much. I think they are in the shade. But see, but that's, but that's very... That's the kind of thing that you would hope that the committee would say, well, wait a minute, if we're going to put a bronze, like in the Fennel Hall, there's a red hour back that you can sit next to. Yeah. But that's also in the shade. So if we're going to put a bronze that you can pose with, well, then it shouldn't be in the sun. Exactly. Then or maybe it should shade. be made out of white concrete or okay. whatever the case may be. That's why you need a committee because you get people saying, "Wait a minute!" You get, and that's why you work with the Sculpture Association because they're going to be thinking about these oh, things. Okay. So ideally, what we're going to do is we will first get um, Lifetime Fitness squared away. Okay. And then we will start to look hard at these questions of where in town should this be? Okay. Now, there are towns that have sculptures all through the town. There are western towns where there's a cow at every major corner. The problem with that is, number one, I don't think that we will... I'm, I'm, I'm guessing at this point that Theorizing. most people would not really want a completely distributed sculpture park where every major neighborhood had a sculpture because mm -hmm. that's inviting strangers to come into your neighborhood. And I don't think anybody's going to really want that. Yeah. The fact is, the center of town, nobody, almost nobody lives there. So if somebody parks and takes the kids on a little hike down yeah. the thing to see the sculptures, it's not a problem for anybody. And in fact, for the new restaurants opening up where Building 19 was, it's a good thing. Exactly. They do have to cross the street, but people are going to cross the street anyway. True. So th I think that can be dealt with. So um, uh, probably follow the model of Skokie, Illinois, where we would probably commission maybe four a year for twenty-five hundred dollars each. Okay. Now, one to the enter the contest, you wouldn't get any money. You'd only get it if right. you were chosen. Only from the if four. you're chosen. Okay, now where and, would and that in fact, you might have to pay twenty-five bucks to enter just to keep people from flooding us with foolishness. Okay. You know, where does that money come from? Like a grant, or...? Well, there's two directions we'd be looking at now. Well, three directions. One is partnering with businesses in town. It okay. may be that if uh, somebody wants to put a large sculpture in that part of town, maybe they would give us a little piece for, our, for the, 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 okay. the, the non-commercial center of town. That's one method. The second method would be that the committees, one of our first responsibilities would be to start looking for grant money. Grant money. Okay. I spent the whole day today at a meeting um, sponsored by the Metropolitan Area Planning Council about creative uh, space making and okay. um, uh, boy there's a lot of granting I mean it's just a sea of, yeah. of, 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 need of, a good of grant grants. Writer. Right. So that's and the third thing is we probably would certainly consider going to town meeting and asking uh, for an annual budget. But think about this, four $2,500 sculptures, that's $10,000 a year, if we went with that. Mm -hmm. 
That's less than we spend on the fireworks every year. Last year, the town meeting voted $15,000. And I voted for it. I'm a town meeting member, but that's for one night. The sculpture, and it's great fun. It's wonderful, yeah. but it's one night. Right. For less money, the sculpture park would exist 365 days a year and change everybody's perception of mm -hmm. what this town is about. Instead of saying, oh, Burlington's a town with the mall. That's the mall town, right? They would say, oh, it's, the 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 it's cool that sculptures. cool town with the sculptures. Okay, now I have another question for you. Yeah. Like, as you're talking about, you know, one, fundraising, and two, you know, options if we put it all over around town. Now, many, many years ago, with like 10, 15 years ago, Burlington had, like, the, the calves. Because, like, um, New York City, for a while, did animals yes cow was it cows i think it was cows yes i went to visit my sister in rochester new york and they had horses right and you know visiting my family out in western mass sorry um south hadley high school is the tigers right and they had like tigers and people would paint them and then auction them off I mean, would that be something that could be partnered with, either why as not? a fundraiser or... Why not? I mean, that's why there'll be a committee of, of, to, to open the scope of what we can do. But sure, if we were to get um, 10 or 20 or 30... Because um, uh, BCAT did a, a calf here in Burlington, and then they auctioned them off. And for a while, the one that BCAT submitted was at the preschool, you know, at the integrated preschool, and right. I don't know where all of them went, but... Well, let me mention something else that's, I think, interesting about Burlington, and that is that this is the only town I know around where there's no art association. It's an interesting fact. Okay. It's I not a terrible know. thing, yeah. but it's not a positive thing either. I mean, there are most towns, they have an art association, and they get together, they do all kinds of... Act we don't have one. If okay. we do, it's a secret to me. <laughs> um, but here's, and I think okay. that um, the link between the sculpture park and potentially an art association would be a very, very close one. Okay. Now, if we did what you said, supposing we got a grant to have 25 four-foot white cows, horses, chickens, octopuses, whatever, yeah. created, and then each, we would dole them out to artists to paint them mm -hmm. and then put them all over town. Okay. Absolutely, why not? Um, but I think one of the things that that would do is we would give preference to Burlington residents. And by doing so, we would smoke out of their studios and basements okay. and attics all, a bunch of Burlington artists. And we, okay. the, So it's possible that the Sculpture Park can help foment a recognized art association in town by saying to any artist who wants to, for fill out a form, do whatever, yeah. whatever, and you get a four-foot white sculpture Thing. that you can do yeah. anything within reason that you want. Exactly. And that could be great fun. That could be great fun. That'd and, fun. you know, but we would look into, we're, what does it cost to get, you know, 25 four-foot white octopus cows, yeah. horses, chickens, or whatever the case yeah. may be. So, uh, I think that there's a lot of potential in a lot of, in a lot of areas. Mm. You know, we actually have, can we look at some photos of sure some thing. of your... Absolutely. I th well, I think you sent us some, so we can oh, ask yes. Colleen if, or... Who is that? I, well, I had simply taken some of Google Maps um, street cam pictures. Okay. Found some sculptures in very quick and dirty in Photoshop, just, just put them in the town so we could uh, yeah. imagine. Oh, those now, okay. those two fellows right there are actually two uh, roughly 12 foot high dragons that I made out of styrofoam. Okay. I, I painted one purple stripes and the other one black and white. Uh, my girlfriend who is a, a set designer for theater oh, as well okay. as an architect, she painted the black and white one. Okay, but those wouldn't qualify for the sculptures because they're... They're styrofoam, they're and styrofoam in fact, and when uh, we did the video segment with Rich Hosford, oh, the purple okay. one got blown over and broke its leg. <laughs> oh, no! Do you know how hard it is to find a veterinarian that will fix a styrofoam dragon? Very tough, very tough. Anyway, so those yeah. were just done to bring to celebrate Burlington Oh, Day. I like that. Now, imagine, if you will, okay. there we have... Um, 
account. the Grandview Farm. Yeah. And it, the, the fact that Grandview Farm was rescued from uh, falling down, to me, is a tremendous point of pride. Because that yeah. is postcard worthy, that even is. without That's the sculptures. Cool. It's a beautiful yeah. thing uh, and a great gathering place. But anyway, imagine if we were to put big, colorful, those were animals. Okay. Animal sculptures are very popular. Okay. The, people love animals. They can be done big in color out of mm -hmm. sheet metal. They're sort of indestructible. Uh, we haven't talked about Unless vandalism you're a giant yet. Purple we'll dragon. But yeah. That's yes. Okay. Now there's a little <laughs> field, a little field between the police station on the left and on the right. On that picture is Grandview Farm. Okay. And I have photoshopped a couple of sculptures in there. One is a is giant green? wave. Okay, I see the giant wave. That's pretty cool. But what's the green thing? The green thing is two characters. Uh, it's sort of a is tough one because it's green on green. No, they're two characters sort of carrying a tube. And the tube is kind of also their torsos. So, oh. it, yeah, it's a little Very hard to see, but it's, it's two characters walking along. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and they're just picked. You just go online and you say, show me outdoor sculptures, and you steal okay. them and you just Photoshop them into the town. We have some okay. other examples as well. That would be pretty cool. Yes, yes. That area in particular. Now, I, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me yeah, back go back up. a little bit and say this. Um, the two ideas for the location of the Sculpture Park have been, one is along Simons Park all the way down the hill, okay. across from the new Building 19. Okay. I'm sure we will not call it that for very long as soon as oh, it's completed. Oh, I don't know. Tower Record Plaza is still yeah, the whatever. Tower Records Plaza, so, and they've been now, gone for... Now, the other potential location ever. would be in front of all of the town buildings on Center Street, starting oh, over by Fire, Fire Station, and then there's uh, the Town, the town Hall, Hall Annex, Annex, and then and town, town Hall, Hall Police, Library. But even before you get to the police station, there's um, a new building where veterans yes just that's in. right all of those things okay. there uh, and the other thing that's interesting about that is that Center Street is a very low traffic area it is it's very everybody stays on Cambridge everybody stays on Cambridge and so people go very slow there and so if you think about it there's a good argument to be made that the sculptures could be completely in front of the town offices okay um, from recreation on one end, okay, uh, all the way down through this area where the big yep. where the big open field is, okay. where that where that hay rake is. Where Center Street yes. turns, right? Okay. And then if you cross from there to the common uh, for an event, there it's a much safer thing than it is to cross three A. On the other hand, <laughs> the argument that you would make for the three A location is that the majority of people when they come through town. Mm -hmm they would see the sculptures better. If well, if it's a nice day, you can see across the common, and that way you could see, you know, the common and the gazebo, well, and then the art. And what we could do is we could put two there and two there, and, and then go out there and day. look at them and see what happens. In fact, the committee could say, you know, let's take some of John's uh, styrofoam dragons, put one over there and one over there on a day where it's not too windy and see yeah. what they look like. Um, but that's why we're going to have a committee to make those kinds of decisions. Oh, okay. um, the location, it's been my personal belief that the center of town is the general best place okay. to put these things to change people's perception of the town. Very, very visible, okay. as opposed to, you know, in the commercial sector where okay. um, they, I don't think they'll symbolize Burlington if they're right. on Third Ave or Mall Road yeah. as much as if they're in the center of town. Right. Because then it becomes Burlington's. It is a municipal yeah. sculpture park. It is park. still the center, so you know, right. it's just we need to recognize it as such. Now, another question that I have for you is, a couple of years ago, um, Board of Health went around to all the parks and playgrounds and put um, scent hand lotion, yes, sunscreen. Yes, yes. And great idea. But half of them were vandalized the first year that they were out. Mm -hmm. How would we prevent someone from coming and spray painting graffiti on, you right. know, Make Way for Ducklings or right. knocking stuff over or 
these are I think vandalism is one of the first questions that comes up and I don't think I have a perfect easy answer for it. I, here's what I would say about it number one that these locations are both very close to the police station so that anybody particularly the in town center on center mm -hmm. street but even right across the common if yeah. somebody's messing about over there they're practically line of sight from police station so they're right. really asking for trouble uh, and it's also just you know visit like you not just the police station but also visibility right now if we did put them along uh, on the hillside down by the trees those might be more uh, susceptible susceptible because yeah. you could run out of the trees and all right number one we would make part of our specification that the sculptures even if they're interactive even the things that you can play with that they're fairly indestructible okay. that you can't simply walk up and break it okay. the worst you can probably do is to spray paint it okay and if they spray paint it uh we'll paint it back the way it was or we'll remove it if it gets to be a real problem then we can't solve it mm -hmm. well then it could come to the point where we say okay this puts very severe limitations maybe we can only put one outside police and one outside yeah. here one outside there um, but I wouldn't by any means suggest that we shouldn't do it because of the fear of vandalism mm -hmm. um, I think that as I say the the sculptors would be told in the specifications that it's an outdoor sculpture mm -hmm. It's not going to be under 24 7. We're, we're not expecting to put uh, yeah, video, cam surveillance video cameras. cameras. Although, <laughs> the truth is that. Everybody has video surveillance cameras. There though. are a lot of video surveillance cameras probably uh, okay. around, and maybe that's a possibility. Maybe if it was determined that we needed to do that and put them on the utility poles, okay. that's something that the sculpture committee could raise the money for, and okay. then it could be shown, it could be recorded over at the police station. So that, that's a, a reason to really work with the police okay. on that it's a concern for sure but uh, let me give an example of an interesting interactive sculpture that's almost indestructible um, if you go to the de Cordova mm -hmm. there's a sculptor who is the grandson of Matisse the painter wow and his okay. name is Matisse Paul Matisse and he he's done a number of interactive sculptures this one is a series of aluminum pipes that are set in a concrete bed and they're all different heights okay and it's about 30 feet long and there's a little basket where people put wooden sticks twigs and branches that they find and you're encouraged to walk up and down and bang and make your own music fun okay it's one of the most popular things it's visually interesting and the sound is not enough to bother anybody right you wouldn't hear it from more than 50 feet away it's a wonderful thing um, it would be really, really hard to vandalize that. The worst that you could do is you could spray paint it. But it would still work. It would still work. Now, one of the things I'd love to think of is a, a way to create a sculpture that people could, were invited to interact with mm -hmm. in a way that was safe for them and safe for the sculpture. Haven't figured that out yet, but <laughs> that would be something that we would hope some sculptor out there would have an idea on how to do that. That would be cool. What other kind of maintenance issues would be involved for the project? I mean, like, I, um, we talked about moving stuff, you know, but that would be like every year or two. Yeah, I, I, we kind of assumed that um, I mean, this would be something that the folks, uh, the recreation folks who do lots of installations, they put in benches yeah. and they put in... Uh, something for them to have to mow around. Yeah, they would have to mow around, but I don't think mowing around a sculpture is a big okay. deal. In fact, it gives you a little less mowing to do. <laughs> um, but it basically, it would be like putting in a bench. If you think about okay. it, a bench is, um, it's about the same size and weight, maybe a little shorter. Sculptures might be taller. Uh, has to be cemented in. Um, and I guess a bench doesn't invite vandalism quite so much because it's a little less, it's a lower profile than a sculpture. But nevertheless, recrea recreation um, puts those things in all the time, okay. all over town. And, and they also put in playground equipment. So okay. for them to put in, f you know, four bolts and yeah. a sculpture pad should be... One of the things we have to look into is, is it possible to have a standard... Uh, 
you know, uh, mounting where there's four bolts and it's like really easy to replace them. Okay. I don't know if that's a reasonable thing. And we would ask the sculpture people, yeah. is that a reasonable thing to request? So that like you a have standard, you know, take right. this one out, plop that one on, you know, kind of like light bulbs. Kind of well, like light maybe. bulbs. I think that would be wonderfully handy, but that the sculptors may say, no, that constricts what we do too much. Oh, so we okay. have to listen a little bit to them too. But artists are supposed to be creative problem solvers. They are. They are. <laughs> they are. We hope they are. Okay. Um, we touched upon this a little bit, but when you are trying to attract sculptors to give, you know, create a sculpture to use in the sculpture park. Yeah. How would you define or defend freedom of expression? Oh, well, I think, uh, as I said before, I think it's... Um, Will there be, like, guidelines? Oh, absolutely. Or yes. In fact, I, I put down, put together a very first set of guidelines, which we're reviewing with the Sculpture Association. Okay. But uh, as I said before, um, I think that uh, we want works of art that will delight a lot of people. Okay. They'll be colorful. They'll be maybe interactive. They could move in the wind, whatever the case may be. I don't think that um, there is I think a municipal sculpture park is just not the place for political statements. Okay. And, or, in what fact... What something like historical figures or something? Well, that's a very interesting question. Like, now, that's still a sculpture, but it's not really modern art. Well, that's, a, that's another thing for the committee to take up. Now, a bronze, just a bronze of a war hero... Okay. That could be kind of dull. You could... My concern with that kind of a bronze is you could drive right past and go, I didn't even see it. Okay. It's just, it's just, because it'll turn dark over time. And, you know, it, it just, on the other hand, the ducklings in the public garden mm -hmm. are bronze. And they're probably among, well, they're certainly the most beloved sculpture in Boston. And um, the Auerbach sculpture is also bronze, but mm -hmm. you can sit with it, put your right. arm around him okay. and rub his head. Um, so I think a bronze, um, now, but I'm like could Francis Wyman or Francis Marshall Wyman. Simons, yes, or, you know, absolutely. That would be up to the committee. Okay. Uh, that's why we 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 will have people from pretty pretty much the the major institutions in town, probably planning board and library and schools and so forth, so that oh, people have okay. a good sense. Of maybe historical society. Maybe we'll go see if we can re recruit from them. Um, I just feel like if it's going to be a bronze, it shouldn't be one of those kind of that recedes into the background. I okay. think uh, if it's it doesn't hot. make a child smile, okay, it should make a child smile. Okay, that would be a rough guideline for me. They don't all have to be super kid friendly, but I think. What about like some of those kinetic sculptures? Like, what is it? Is it um Porter, no, it's not Porter Square. Yes, they it had a like wind-driven one for years. Yeah. I think they still do. I haven't been down there in years, but it always reminded me kind of like a crab or a lobster, yes. and it would just kind of spin there. And I think a kinetic thing like that would be absolutely... Now, there's an interesting thing, because there's a sculpture at the intersection of Mass Ave and whatever that street is that runs down towards Somerville. Mm -hmm. That's a very busy area. And I don't think anybody has ever said that waving sculptor is a driving hazard because it's distracting. Right. I don't think it really is. It doesn't move that fast. I think something that moves in the wind would be wonderful. Now, then we have to ask the other questions. First of all, is it affordable? Will is it knock it, someone unconscious? Is uh -huh. yes, <laughs> right. Um, um, is it is it prone to vandalism? You know, one big sculpture in Porter Square probably has a camera aimed at it that the police department monitors because okay. it's one sculpture. We have a whole it's spring. It's also really up high, too, so it's you very really high. have to... Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the question is, could something be built that was had wind movement that was that satisfied the requirements of being safe and fun and colorful and vandalism-free? Hmm. But I would think any sculptor who's into outdoors, you know, really significant sculpture would already be thinking about these yeah. things. 
Because okay. um, outdoor to start with, you've got the wind and the sun and the snow to deal with. Indoor, a whole different story. You can have a delicate sculpture indoors because it's yeah, yeah it's different, indoors. Different story. There's also a, I don't know if it's also Porter Square, but there's also a subway station that has like the bronze gloves that go down. I don't remember that. There on, is on the, the same sculpture Matisse. Okay has in the subway station at Kendall Square near MIT, he has a giant set of gongs, and on both sides of the tracks, there's a handle that you can pull back and forth, and it makes these hammers yes! swing back and forth. Right? Okay, I think I do remember that. I saw now that, that That was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, I would like to see something like that, because then people are can come up and interact with it. Okay. Now, in their case, the handle is all you have access to because the actual chimes are between the tracks and you can't get to them. That's They're true. pretty it's pretty but vandal. We don't have subway tracks in the middle of town. We so. do not. Right. So but something like that? Now I actually sent an email to that sculptor Paul Matisse and said, do something. But he <laughs> is kind of a national sculptor with okay. a long list of uh, projects and he may be out of our budget range. Okay. Uh, but on the other hand, we know that there are basement and backyard sculptures that weld okay. all over New England that would be interested. Okay. So anything's possible. Anything's possible. Actually, on my show, for my 100th episode, we had a wood carver, and he's done wood sculptures, and he does the, um, the sand sculpture at the Topsfield Fair every year. Okay, really? sand would be out of the question sand because would be once tough. it rains, you know, you're up a tree without a paddle. Yes. But well, you know, one of the things that they have at the Dakota that we could not reproduce, which is a dumb, simple idea, but kind of wonderful, is they have a sculpture which consists of a pile of tan bricks and a pile of brown bricks, and you are invited to move bricks from one to the other, so the sculpture changes over time. Now. Uh, yeah, but then you have somebody pick up and carry the bricks all away. That only works there because it's not really a completely open to the public right. thing 24-7. Right. Truth is, you could sneak in, but they know that <laughs> the chance of people sneaking yeah, into no. the Mill is not good. So again, I've been trying to think of how would you create a sculpture that invites interaction but is still relatively vandal-proof. And I haven't come up with it yet, but yeah. I'm not... I'm You're just working on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have a few ideas, but I'm not a sculptor. I'm more of a uh, sculpture fan. Okay, what we only have a few minutes left. Yeah, but what is your time? You know, I know we touched upon it, but what is the timeline? I mean, once you get the committee, is it going to take a year, two years, five years? Well, we have our f we have the uh, lifetime fitness sculpture, which we have the money and we have the pad in place. Okay. We'd like to see that happen by maybe around May. Uh, First sculpture. Nineteen. Yeah, n next summer. Wow. Yeah, because okay. we have to go through the process of putting out the word. Okay. Uh, and then getting the responses, and then choosing it, and then having it actually brought and installed. And presumably then done in six months. I think so. Wow. Okay. Uh, I may be wrong, but I mean that's a goal. I would okay. think if we uh, let's assume that we jump in. Uh, big time right after the holidays because nothing's going to happen in December. Yeah, we know that. Gonna happen in December. But if we start having a serious um, uh, outreach in January, February, March, and April, okay. maybe we can have it by May or June. Now, um, and that's getting our feet wet with okay. the whole process of working with the Sculpture Association and putting together mm -hmm. guidelines and physically getting a sculpture in town. Then I would think as soon as that is kind of underway, then we start putting together our plan for the town center sculpture oh, okay. park or sculpture trail if you want to look okay. at it that way and probably start looking for funding and maybe go to town meeting uh, at we meet three times a year the budget meeting is in May mm -hmm. maybe we would go in May and ask for ten thousand dollars a year I don't know um, one of the questionnaires on the art for Burlington site is are you in favor of a sculpture park are you in favor of if it costs the town nothing? Or are you in favor of it even if it costs the town something? Okay. And most people so far, and I can make the results you know, uh, public, uh, most people, I'd say, say if it costs the town something. 
Now we're not talking about a hundred thousand dollars. Right. We're talking about a starting number of something like ten thousand dollars a year, which is this is a town with a budget of 138 million. So ten thousand dollars a year is a little, little teeny piece yeah. of that. Now I realize. Yeah. Well, if you keep saying ten thousand here, ten thousand well, there, well, yeah, it adds up. But the truth is that our real expenses here are uh, not Fourth of July and um, right. Sculpture Park, but you know there are the schools and the places where the serious money should be being invested. And even once the sculpture, yeah, I mean, theoretically, once the sculpture park does get established, maybe there could be other fundraising efforts where right. you wouldn't have to go to the town. So it would be just like a, a startup. The hope would be that if we get an initial group of two or four sculptures that people really like, mm -hmm. that are, people are delighted with the idea that we will just start increasing. Okay. If on the other hand, uh, for some reason the idea goes bad and I can't quite imagine how it would, um, then we can um, moderate the process. Um, the other thing is, again, it's not, a, it's not an art museum. We can abandon the whole idea if for some reason, that we unexpected reason, we realize, oh my gosh, we can't do this because of something nobody yeah. ever thought of. Now, it occurred to me that the idea could succeed too well. If we had 30 sculptures in town, suddenly weekends, there'd be too many people coming. But we'd have lots of postcards. We'd have good <laughs> postcards, and the new uh, business we're building 19 was would be doing land office business at the restaurants, because you would go to the sculpture park, and then you would go to the nearby restaurants. Huh? Let me mention one other thing. One of the things that came up quite a bit in the Master Plan Steering Committee is that Burlington is actually in competition with places like Cambridge and Somerville to attract companies that need mm. to grow. Okay. Now, Somerville and Cambridge have two things that we don't have, uh, and one that we'll never have in, in our lifetimes probably, which is extensive rapid transit. They have the red line. Yeah. All right, uh, and that's hard to beat. We have the B line. We have the Not B line. Not quite the same. Not Understood. quite the same. So, um, and the other thing is, they have nightclubs with music, and they have cafes, and they have all this cool stuff. Yeah. Burlington doesn't have that much of that stuff. So one of the things, and I'm not claiming that we're going to completely, but we are competing with mm -hmm. Cambridge and Somerville right. for and other towns around. I think if the reputation is, you know, that's a really cool town. That's a town with the sculpture. Yeah. You know, I could work there. I could move there. I think it's a positive. They're very art. They're very open. Right. They're very contemporary. Right. right. Like so I think, I think it's a win-win from every possible point of view. And if there are any negatives that turn up along the way. We can fix them. Well, if we, if we ended up saying, oh my gosh, we got 10,000 people in town last weekend, like the Bridge of Flowers we were talking right, about yep. in Shelburne Falls, which is a major tourist attraction. We don't want that. Yeah. Okay, let's take out half the sculptures. Okay. Let's tone it down. That, that would be quite a problem to have. Well, hopefully we will eventually have that problem someday. But thank you so much for coming. Hey, we thanks for having time. us. I really enjoy talking about that. I, I'm like, I want to become a sculptor now. So I could put something on the town common. You just have but to learn how to weld. But you use concrete. Just there you go. Okay. But thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, yeah. John, for coming and joining me tonight. Thank you, everyone at home, for tuning in this evening. I hope you found our conversation as encouraging and as enlightening and as exciting as I have. And I will see you around town. Good night.